So hi everyone to this video. So today in this video, we are going to build a reverse proxy for Webflow. So this reverse proxy is based on the FinSuite's reverse proxy, but I have forked it to add some extra features. So without wasting time, let's see what it can do. So this is called like Thin reverse proxy, and this is a quick demo uh, that's available on thin.dev slash docs. Uh, so what it is that um, it has the core features of FinSwiss reverse proxy. So like you can proxy your main site under your domain and then you can proxy another uh, Webflow sites uh, under subfolders. But now what the additions to the FinSwiss reverse proxy here are that you can proxy other sites that are hosted outside of Webflow. So just like many businesses or software companies have docs, right? So instead of hosting them at like something like docs.thin.dev, now you can host them at like thin.dev slash docs, right? So you can do that. And then you can also, uh, as you can see here, you can uh, like proxy uh, files to your root domain. So in many cases, like for example, when you're setting up Apple Pay on your site, right? Uh, they give you some files that you have to host on your root domain. Uh, but if your site is built on Webflow, uh, you're out of luck because you can't host anything in the same um, the, like root folder because that's where Webflow is hosting it and Webflow doesn't provide you a way to host files there. So with this reverse proxy, we are using Cloudflare and Cloudflare's R2 storage to host files and then serve them on the root, right? So if anyone comes to this domain, they just see the file. So, and next thing is uh, with this reverse proxy, because we are proxying so many sites, let's say you are proxying 10 different Webflow projects. So you might have 10 different, now you not might, you will have 10 different sitemaps that are generated, right? So, you know, Webflow generates a slash sitemap.xml on your domain, um, but that's very hard when you have to update all of those on Google, right? So instead of that, with this reverse proxy, you get a single file that's like sitemap index.xml, and then you can just give that to Google. And whenever you add new sites to this reverse proxy, you just update that uh, like sitemap in your root folder and like Google will keep track of it. So without wasting time, uh, let's get started. So how are we going to get started is uh, we're going to use a CLI that I have built called Thin CLI, and it's available to install on NPM, but here we will use NPX. And for the viewers here that have doesn't that don't have a local node environment setup there's so many uh videos on youtube where you can go and search setup node.js uh, on like mac os windows so if we quickly see here there's only three things that you will need you will need to have node.js on your local machine and that's automatically going to install npm and then you also need to have git installed uh so quickly do a youtube search and figure out how to install this if you don't have it and for users that have it let's move forward uh so what we're going to do is so first thing is this right so let me open a terminal right so let's open a terminal window uh, let me drag this terminal here. It just opened on my another screen for some reason. Okay, let's open here. So I have this folder here. That's YouTube. That's in my documents. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do CD documents slash YouTube. And now I'm in my YouTube folder, right? And uh, this is where I want to have this proxy initialized. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this command to initialize this proxy. So for some reason, if this doesn't work, you can also click here and go to the GitHub repo where you will find everything about this and you can clone it from there as well. But um, I'll show you why you should use this CLI. So if you hit enter, now you'll see it is asking what should be the name of the folder uh, where this uh, project is gonna be initialized. So let's do YT proxy. And now you will see it uh, cloned the project and it in, uh, installed all the NPM modules here. And you can see it here. So now what we can do is we can just take it and drag it to VS Code. And that's going to open this in my VS Code. And now once we are here, we can do Control plus J to open the terminal. Or for users, you can also click this thing to open the terminal here. And now let's go back to our docs and see. 
So next thing is, okay. So this is wrong. I'm going to correct this in um, the docs. I think this was a typo, but the next step is logging into cloud, uh, like your Wrangler CLI. So Wrangler, if you don't know, is the CLI for Cloudflare. So um, by when I, once I publish this video, I'm gonna update this, but this is the incorrect command. What should you do is npx uh, Wrangler, and then you do, just do login. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna open a browser window and it's gonna ask you to log in into your Cloudflare account. And for now, let's do yes. And if you close this and come back, you will see successfully logged in. So now let's um, ignore this one and let's go to the third step. So you will see now this CLI, the thin CLI comes with this uh, like a proxy setup command. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna ask you a bunch of uh, questions and help you set up this proxy, right? So you don't have to do everything on your own. So, uh, so okay, this, so this is the reason I do the latest uh, flag here. So just in case I have published a new version of the CLI to fix some bugs or something, um, it automatically installs that. And now it's, let's do the same thing. We're gonna do this CLI and we're gonna name it the same thing. And now it's asking us for what should be the domain where this proxy will live. So what I mean by that is, so um, this the main domain, it's asking you this thing. So let's use my website as the example. So my website is thin.app, right? So this is where my main entry point to this proxy is. So if you go to thin.dev, this is uh, what the web, uh, it's serving you, right? And then I have a bunch of sites inside, right? But this is the main thing, right? So we're gonna enter the main entry point here. So just for example, let's keep using my domain and let's do thin.dev, right? And now it's asking us what is the main subdomain of the Webflow project. So what this means is, uh, so if I come here uh, and let's show you. So now it's asking us this thing, right? But you will see uh, this is not the main site. And if you have watched uh, FinSuite's videos, um, they go in deep dive how this proxy works. But I'm gonna quickly show you. Uh, so you will see that in Webflow, this project is actually hosted at main.thint.dev, right? But we are proxying it on this domain. So now it's asking us this thing, main, right? So what is the domain where your main project is hosted? So in this case, in my case, that's main, right? So it, it is asking us this thing. So once that's done, now it's asking us, do you have existing Cloudflare R2 bucket. Now what's that? So you know uh, like Google Firestore or Amazon S3 bucket. These are storages that you can use to host your files, if I'm correct. So in Cloudflare, that's called R2. So what uh, this is the additional thing on top of what FinSuite built is we can now serve files from a root domain. So let's show you the example first. So uh, I have a demo here like index.js. So if you go here, you'll see this is the hello, like just a random string of code here, but you can serve any file here, right? So why this is useful is just like, just if some service provider asks you to host files here, or if you wanna host a service worker here, something then you would use this and we will use Cloudflare's R2 for this. And now I will say, do you have existing R2 bucket? So if you wanna link a existing R2 bucket, say yes, but if you don't, uh, just say no. And now it will ask you, do you want to create a new Cloudflare R2 bucket? And if you wanna skip this, just go here and say, I'll create it later manually. But for now, let's do yes. And then it's going to ask us the name and let's just keep the same name here as well. So we will do this and now it's saving the configurations. So what it means by that. So you will see there's some changes to this Wrangler 
toml file so if i go here you will see it automatically generated this wrangler toml which tells the cloudflare worker like what are its roles what are its permissions and everything so you will see it has the name and then now it has the main domain it has our main webflow subdomain and then it has linked to the bucket here and that's basically it that's where we are so far so now let's go back to our docs okay so now let's the next command it says is we should deploy it but we can skip that for now let's like see what else we can do so i already explained this thing to you right so your main domain is your main uh, is proxying your main webflow project and then any subfolder so like thin.f slash use loop would proxy use loop dot thin.f and then docs like thin.dev slash docs that's this url is proxying something uh, that's hosted on docs.thin.f and that's how you create subfolders and then how you configure that is in the triangular tml file in subdomains you list subdomains like this so in my case that would be use loop and then docs like this right and then you will click save and that's how you would do subfolders and then you would see the next command is thin uh, proxy build so what this command does is so we would use npx again so let's do build right and before that let's see what our tml file has so you would see this routes right this is just a dummy data for now but what we are doing is uh, with this build command it's gonna build routes for each of our domains right so our cloudflare worker will, will only be triggered when any of these are like hit so cloudflare worker would like get triggered when you are going to use loop.thin.dev but it will not get triggered when you're going to api.thin.dev right so that's why we want to ensure that we are not proxying everything that's coming to, to like thin.dev so we will do this command and you will see there's uh, uh it builds the angular tml file and it creates a bunch of routes to make sure that we are proxying uh everything correctly and now if we come back here so it's again asking us to deploy so let's move forward and we'll deploy at the end i'll show you with the real example and now it's saying is root files right so hosting files in the root so if i come here and show you this right how can you do this so if you go here and you see this your root files go in this folder so the root folder is where you will have all the files that you want to host in the root of your domain right so you can build the same thing you can do as index.js and then you can do as you have a console log here of hello world let's say for example right and then you will use as you would do the same thing npx 10 latest proxy and you will just change this flag to upload and once you do this uh, the cli is going to ask you okay which file from the root do you want to upload and you can say i want to upload this file and once you selected the file it shows you this file is now hosted and we can double check that so if i go here to my r2 you will see this one this is what we created just now right so yt proxy and you will see i was testing this before uh, so this is where your like file is right but now here like you don't you can't access it you can only access these files from our proxy so now let's go to our docs next thing sitemaps so what are sitemaps you know right so we like webflow provides a sitemap for each of our webflow project so if i go here and now i go to sitemap.xml you will see this is the sitemap that webflow has generated and i would like to point another thing you will see like if there's any file that webflow is serving right we are getting that but we can also now like use the same thing to get files from our storage isn't that cool i think <laughs> okay so let's come back 
so you can see now I have sitemap right dot XML and this is my sitemap for my main uh, like website but now as I have another folder here I have a sitemap for everything and then I have a sitemap for docs but now when you have multiple projects it's very hectic to go every time and upload a sitemap there right so what I have done is I have created a, another uh, like CLI command so what it does is so if you do this right and then you change this flag now to sitemap and hit enter so it's gonna generate a sitemap uh, like sitemap index and it's gonna ask you do you want to upload this to your root directory and for now let's do yes and you will see it uploaded it to sitemap and you can also see the sitemap here so you will see this is a sitemap index so what is sitemap index so if i go here and now i do sitemap index okay there's something wrong okay no sitemap index is in our root so sitemap index so what is sitemap index so sitemap index is a sitemap for all our sitemaps right so how a sitemap tells google oh these are the pages in this sitemap so sitemap index tells google these are all the sitemaps for this domain right so it will tell google oh these are all the sitemaps you should go to get all the pages inside this domain and i hope that's clear so now you can just take this url and give it to google and now for whenever you have another subfolder just update this and google will keep getting reading your sitemap index and fetching all your sitemaps and that's all for now so now um uh, this is the test project and it's on the same domain so i can't use this but i'll show you my real one so if i open this in visual studio code and so okay this is so let's clear this um so this is my actual proxy right so if i go here you will see these are all the routes and everything you will see this thing so another video coming up so more projects that I'm gonna publish on this YouTube channel, but let's see how you would deploy everything, right? So now we do is same thing. Uh, so npx then latest proxy, and you just do is deploy. And so you will see it will build the TML file again, just in case you forgot to run the build command, and it will deploy it. So the reason we have the build command is, so just in case you don't wanna deploy it and you just wanna save the progress, you do the build command and then update it on GitHub or something. But when you're ready, just then you can deploy. And that's all. So if I go back and we go back here, so let's go to our workers, then the proxy, let's go to deployments. And you would see like here is what we have a few seconds ago right so we just deployed it and that's all so that's all guys so i hope you liked this video so go ahead use the thin cli use this reverse proxy in your projects and i'll meet you in the next video peace